Hey everybody, Mark Kennedy here. Uh, listen, today we've got Sean Mize with us. Uh, Sean has personally created dozens of products in his first four years online. Now, he has been responsible for over 23,000 articles published and is an expert, an absolute expert at creating profitable sales funnels. John, are you with me? Yeah, I sure am. Wow. Thank you very much for having me here. And wow, what what an introduction. I should remember that about myself every single day when I get up in the morning and begin to work on uh, creating a new product or a new products funnel or something like that. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> you, you, it's my pleasure. I'm glad you're here with us. I really appreciate it. Well, good deal. I'm looking forward to having some some fun today. And uh, sharing some things that, frankly, some of what I'm going to share with you, with you today, I've never shared with anybody. <laughs> well, is that right? That's, see, that's what we're looking for. I really appreciate that. Right on. Hey, um, before we get started, Sean, can I ask you real quick, would you mind giving everybody just, just real quick kind of a little bit of background of how you got started and why you got started in Internet marketing? Uh, yeah, sure. A quick a quick background, huh? <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, you know. back in, back in uh, 2006, at the beginning of the year, January 2006, um, I began to look at building an Internet business, and I was still working at the time and, and uh, that kind of thing. But certainly not to imply that what I do now is not work, but, but uh, working offline. And I uh, began looking at building an online business, and, and be honest with you, over the next six to eight months, boy, tried out a lot of things, bought, bought a number of different products, and uh, started buying a little traffic here and sending it over to an affiliate page here or there, and, and uh, pretty much only found out that I could break even. And, and really, for me, that was still exciting because, hey, I was a beginner, and I figured that if I could break even as a beginner, then... You know, if I just tweak some things, make traffic twice as good or, or find affiliate offers that were twice as good, then I could get to a 50% profit margin, which, you know, really for the offline world's not, not that bad. We're bigger margins than that online. Um, but what happened was later in, in the year, July and then early August, um, I'd had enough success, although I hadn't, wasn't, I don't believe at that time I was in profit. I had enough success selling things that I knew people bought online. And for me, that was huge. And they bought from some of the people that I was following. And, again, for, for me, that was huge, that, that a sales page actually converts into buyers. And, and I got to see that with my own eyes. And so I actually took a vacation uh, down to Florida, one of my favorite beaches, and uh, spent, uh, I believe it was two weeks on the beach, and really, really enjoying the vacation and not looking, looking forward to going back to work. And so at that time I said, you know, given everything that I've been studying and been practicing over the course of the last six to eight months and not really making a lot of money, you know, there are people out there that are making money. What are they doing? What are they doing to make money? And so I, I just kind of set off while I was on that vacation on a quest to figure out what was, with fresh eyes, not taking anyone else's word for it, but literally fresh eyes, what are the top 25 people online in the information marketing world doing? And I'll tell you, what I discovered was that they, all, almost without fail, possibly without fail, they all were not marketing to the world in general. They were marketing to a list. They were, they, had built, they were building a list through many different means, so whether it was traffic or, or having an army of affiliates or whatever. But the bottom line was they, were all, they all had a list, and they were selling not to the world, not, you know, not through a blog. They were selling to their list. And what were they selling? They were selling products that they created. And for me, that was, that was the wake-up call. That was the, wow, everything that I've been doing, this is cool. But if this is the top 25 people on earth in Internet marketing are doing, hey, that's what I'm going to do. I don't have a product. I don't have a list. Um, so how can I make this happen? And so the very first thing I did in August of 2006, I created a basic squeeze page, a generic basic squeeze page. And to create the free giveaway, I went online and did, did uh, research. also purchased a number of products. So I knew what other people were teaching about sort of the basic steps and kind of the generic area, and I went into the internet marketing niche in kind of the generic area of, 
uh, internet marketing, created a generic list and didn't know what I was going to do with it. I knew that I needed to create products, and so the way I monetized it the first couple of months was affiliate products, people that I'd purchased from. I simply marketed some of, of their items. And I'll tell you, the interesting thing happened for me, Mark, was that the first couple of months uh, through, uh, and the way that I drove most of my traffic at that time was by writing articles. It was an inexpensive way to get started, and because I'd made the decision that I was going to live on what little was in the savings account and not take a job when I got back from that vacation, I had 8, 10, 12 hours a day to, to write. And so that's pretty much what I did. I, I wrote and, and submitted articles. The first uh, August and September didn't get a lot of money. I think I did $125 in August and then 250 in September. But I had created a list by now of maybe 500 people and didn't have any idea what to do with those people. Um, and obviously, it sold them a, a, you know, a few items and, but, you know, obviously wasn't making a, a decent income with it. And what happened was just through the course of doing one of the things I teach now and that I'm going to talk about today for the 30-day plan, is just asking them what they wanted to learn more about. And, and I'll be, I think, if I remember correctly, it was a while back, but I think I was thinking along the lines of, let me find out what they want to learn about so I can go find another affiliate product to sell them. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what, what happened was people started asking me, well, how did you build a list of 500 people in two months? That's unheard of for a beginner to come in and build a list of 500 people in two months. It just doesn't. And, and remember, this was August of 2006. That's not today. And, you know, there have been a few people out there that had huge budgets and had hundreds of thousands of subscribers. But, you know, the bulk of the people that were on my list were people that had two subscribers were struggling to get number three. So a light bulb went on for me, and I just said, I'm going to write a book that teaches people what I've done in the last 60 days. That's it. I'm just going to teach them what I've done in the last 60 days, nothing else. And that's what I did. Right. I wrote a book. And the next month, um, sold $900. Most of that was that book. And so now, since I've gone from 125 to 250 to 900 bucks, I said, hmm. The book's the answer. People like my book. I'm going to write another one. And then I followed my formula now, the one I've used for years now. I just wrote an email and said, hey, I'm going to write another book. What do you want to learn about? They told me. I wrote another book in November. It's 1600 bucks. Um, December, created another product. Uh, got a little bit more aggressive with uh, lead generation. Did $3,800. Uh, went to the list again the following month and said, you know, basically this was a little bit different. It was, look, you've been buying books from me now. And and, uh, you know, my guess is, that, you know, maybe you need more help than just books, do you? People said, well, yeah, do you have a coaching program? I said, no, but I can sure come up with one. So that's what I did, $5,500 in January. And then, uh, long story short, added about a grand a month for the next, uh, up through August of 2007. And on August of 2007, my 13th month online did $15,347. And, wow. you know, uh, you know, there's no such thing, I really believe this, there's no such thing as, you know, getting rich overnight. And there's so much work that goes into making that happen. And yet when people hear that, 13 months to 15,347, you know, that's something that almost nobody on earth does, but it didn't come overnight. I mean, that was a lot of work in, in making it happen. The, the first few months were, were definitely negative. I mean, I was spending a whole lot more money than came in the door. And, uh, but, you know, simply stuck with it and made it happen. So anyhow, that's, that's about the shortest I can, I can squeeze my first year down, Mark. <laughs> well, that was great. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Very good. And, you know, that's, that's something that everybody should probably understand also is that, you know, all that overnight success that you see and all that online marketing you get with all those great stories of $100,000 in a week and things like that, even that, everything that, that happens online does take time and you have to work at it. There is no true overnight success and it, it if it is overnight it's just that it's overnight and then it's gone so that's something everybody needs to remember yeah you're absolutely right mark you sure are okay now now sean let me ask you do you really believe that it is possible to make a thousand dollars the first 30 days from scratch if you didn't know anything like a lot of our our uh listeners on, on this call right now if you didn't know anything, how would you start from scratch to make $1,000 in your first 30 days? Okay, that's a great question, Mark, and I'm prepared. I'm going to give you literally step-by-step step exactly what I would do 
if I were to have to start from scratch right now today with nothing except for my, my knowledge in my mind, okay, because you exactly, couldn't take that away exactly from me, right. but have my knowledge in my mind exactly. I'm going to give you a step-by-step plan exactly Perfect. what I would do to generate $1,000 that first month. Um, but, you know, the first part of that question you asked, you know, hey, is it possible for somebody to start from scratch with no knowledge at all and build a business that does $1,000 the first month? The first thing I want to say is, um, yes, it is possible for, for that to happen. However, before we get too excited about that, I, I want to say this, that there's probably a few caveats that happen. If somebody literally doesn't know anything, it, it, it takes a lot of people more than 30 days just to figure out what they want to do, okay, and who they want to follow and trust. And, and so, you know, if I give a 30-day plan today, to somebody that absolutely doesn't know anything and doesn't even know what they want to do, maybe even doesn't even know for sure they want to do information marketing, then in order for them to do that in the next 30 days, they'd have to simply put all of their faith in, in my plan to, to do it and, and do the plan the way that I give them. If they were to do that, though, yeah, I believe $1,000 is possible. There's one other caveat, that, and, and that is the time management of most people I have found is is pretty poor, and I find this with people even that have been working with me for a long time. Sometimes they'll go into a swamp or a plateau, and they're just struggling. They they they're, they're, they created a few products, but now they're working on the next one, and they've been working on it for 90 days. And I do a little exercise with them, and it runs something like this. You know, it might be, you know, John, how much time are you putting into the internet right now per day? Oh, I'm working six hours a day. Excellent. So you've been working six hours a day for the last month. Yeah, I've been working six hours a day for the last month. So what is that? 20 days, six hours, 120 hours. What have you accomplished in the last month? Well, I've written four articles, and I've written six pages in my book, and I've contacted one JV partner. And then the next question is, you know, well, what did you do with all the other – I mean, how much time did it actually take you to do that? Oh, well, maybe five hours. So what did you do with the other 115 hours? I don't know. And then when I start asking questions like, well, are you, you reading emails, you answering emails, are you looking for the best ways to do things besides the way that I've taught you, are you hunting around for maybe a better topic, are you spending time reading jokes online, and, and as soon as I get about that far, they start laughing and they say, you know, you know Sean, you're right, you're right, I wasted an awful lot of time online, what, what can I do about that, and you know, I've, I've got, you know, you know, quite a pro, you know, quite a, 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 you know, process that I go through to kind of help people really get focused. But the the the, the whole thing here is that for that for that person that's starting out, they're going to have to be focused because the 30 day plan that I'm getting ready to give is going to be one that's, well, realistically, it's probably going to take four to six hours per day of actual concentrated work. So you know, that would be in addition to any time people spend online, email, surfing you know, reading YouTube videos, watching YouTube videos, right. whatever the case is. And then if you have somebody that only has two hours a day online, you know, well, if it's a four to six hour a day program, it's going to take three months instead of one. Does, does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I agree with you hundred uh, percent. You know, I know that there is a lot of wasted time when you first start, because a lot of it is you won't know what to do, but with this plan that we're going to get today, you'll know exactly what to do. So if you apply these methods, I I can almost guarantee that you're going to make the money you want to make. Very, very, very good. That well said, well said, Mark. And I just want to be totally honest with people that that this is not a a snap your fingers and the money rolls in the door. And you know, if somebody goes out there and they does it, they do exactly what I teach, and they they put all the time into it. Maybe it takes them 29 days to do it, or maybe it takes them 32 days to do it, or whatever the case is. You know. They're not just going to, you know, land on exactly a thousand dollars. They might do nine hundred ninety-four dollars. They might do eight hundred and fifty-one dollars. They might do one thousand two hundred and nineteen dollars. I mean, we we don't know what that number is going to be. I'll tell you what is really exciting for me, though, Mark, and that is what I find is that the first hundred dollars tends to be the, some of the hardest money for somebody to make. Just making that first hundred dollar profit. Once they make that first hundred dollar profit, they make a couple of sales. All of a sudden, 
there's this renewed energy. They can't sleep at night. They can't sleep at night. Two o'clock in the morning, they're like, I've got to get up and write some more articles. I've got to get up and write another chapter in that next ebook because I'm so excited. And that excitement doesn't happen until that first hundred dollars happens. And then yeah, that's very true. I, I was the same way. I hate to admit it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, You've been there, done that. <laughs> oh yeah, yep, yep. It uh, you know because sometimes you feel like you're beating your head against the wall because you're not sure what you're doing if it's right, you know. And that's that's where these interviews come into play. So, yeah, absolutely. And then once you once you get make a little bit of money, then it's like this this confirmation, and then it goes to another level. Once somebody gets that first thousand dollars in a month, whether it's the first month or if they're doing it more part time and it takes two or three months or you know whatever the case is. Once they have that $4,000 month, it's really easy for them to go back in and say, okay, what did I do to make the $1,000? So if I worked 100 hours this month, how many of those hours actually went to making a grant? And they might find that 30 of them went to it. And then they can, because now that they can look back, they can say, okay, well, next month, if I put the same 100 hours in, I'll just not do what I did those other 70 hours and triple up on my 30 hours worth of work. And then it's really easy for people to start scaling up and do five grand and, and, and continue to grow from there. So anyhow, right. um, I guess that, that our listeners are, are chomping at the bit here to get the exact plan. And so should I just get started with it? You betcha. Just roll with it. Um, you know, I hope everybody's got a notepad out also because you need to write this stuff down. So, um, yeah, if you're ready to go, Sean, I'm ready. You know, we're ready to to hear what you got to say. So that's great. I appreciate it. All righty. Well, very good. Well, let me just jump into it. So, obviously, earlier on, you know, I kind of talked about my my own journey and my own foray. And you know, I in in some way I was either lucky or blessed or you know maybe a combination of both to to find by studying other people what that that basic formula was for information marketing and i tell you what i've done now is is i've put together what i call my four pillars of information marketing and i just want to be real clear that's how i talk about it to my clients you know one of the one of the pillars could probably be con- made into a, a together two of them into one so you could have like a three-legged stool on this you know and then I know other people keep like an extra step or two and and that's fine too and and and, you know for me I look at it as these four steps and it really allows me to stay very very focused in my business and for me those four steps are driving traffic you have to have traffic okay taking that traffic then the second step is turning that traffic into subscribers the third step is a relationship with those subscribers so that they trust you. I believe that people do not buy based on fancy sales letter words. Okay, sure, and you know the right word here or there might bump up sales just a little bit, but if there's no relationship, I don't believe that sales generally happen. Sale here, sales there, but a, a real long-term uh, expert-level business, I believe the relationship is there first. I really, really believe that. Okay, and then the fourth thing that has to happen is once the relationship is there, we have to meet people's needs, and that's usually through products or services for which we are paid a fee. And so for me, the four pillars are traffic, subscribers, relationship, and products. And so what we're going to do in this first 30 days is we're going to do all four of those. Okay, we're going to okay. build, we're going to drive traffic so that we can build subscribers, so that we can build a relationship with those subscribers, so we can sell something to them so they'll send us $1,000 altogether, okay? And as I go through this, I just want to be really clear that this is what I would do if I had to start from scratch all over again. But any one of those four pillars, you could, you could switch out different elements of each one of those four pillars. So I have my methods for doing each one of those. But just because I do it an exact certain way doesn't mean someone else has to. Now, having said that, I believe that if somebody spends all the time trying to figure out what's going to work best for them before they even do anything, they could spend a whole year trying to decide if, if my way for traffic is better than someone else's or my way for relationship building is better than someone else's. They could spend a whole year, and still it would only be a theoretical exercise. And so what I recommend that people do when they first get started whether they use my 30-day plan or they use somebody else's 30-day plan or they use somebody else's 10-step plan or somebody else's three-month plan, whatever it is, my recommendation is just do a plan. 
doesn't matter whose plan it is. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. It doesn't matter if it's perfect for you. Just do it and do it with blinders on. Don't try to mix me with somebody else with somebody else. Choose me or choose somebody else or choose somebody else, but do it. And then once that first thousand dollars is created, then you can look back and you can say, okay, I really enjoyed driving traffic that way. I think that's the traffic for me. But the subscriber part, I didn't really enjoy doing it that way. Let me see if I can find another expert that can help me make my own subscriber system. And then relationship, yeah, I like the way Sean teaches that. Products, I don't really like the way Sean teaches. Let's go work with somebody else. But my recommendation is that somebody just simply blindly follow somebody, anybody, that's been there, done that before, just to get the taste of that initial success, not because they're building the business the way that it's going to look 10 years from now. Does that make sense? Absolutely makes sense. And, you know, that that is a huge thing because everybody, you know, they have to understand that to change the situation they're in, they have to take action. You cannot sit there and wish and wonder and hope that something's going to change until you make a plan to change the problem. So I agree with that 100%. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. All right. So what I've done, there's there's two, and obviously I've given the four, the four pillars, and there's a whole bunch of things that you that someone would do in those first 30 days to achieve all of those pillars. And uh, there's also a set of things that really need to be set up before the first 30 days starts. Okay, now, these things, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to create a list of what these things are. I'm, I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of how to do these. They're all pretty simple things. These are all things that someone could just literally Google the, the name of the action that needs to happen and find a YouTube tutorial of three minutes long that could teach them how to do it, whereas if we spent three minutes on each one of these, you know, we could have like another hour just on a whole bunch of basics that for many people will just be reviewed because these are just things that an absolute beginner would have to have in place before the 30 days actually began or, or at least by the very end of the very first day to be realistic with this. You know, but a lot of these are things that people already have in place. And so what I want to do is give those first. These are things that people could theoretically do all in one day. Um, you know, they could do it on day one. But realistically, if somebody's at total zero, they're probably going to need a couple of days, okay, to do these particular things, to, you know, watch a video, um, to see a tutorial, to, to, to do it. And before I give this list, let me say this. On all of these, there's no perfectly right way to do it. And once again, going back to this idea of just doing it, you know, any one of these steps that I'm going to give, they don't have to be done a specific way. They just have to be done. And so I recommend to the beginner, just do them. This is just to make your first $1,000. This isn't to make your empire. Once you've made your first $1,000, you can go back in and say, you know, do I want to change that? Do I want to change that? That's okay. So these things are, the first thing that somebody has to do is decide a niche. That's the very first thing that they have to do. That's some quick advice on finding a niche. My personal opinion, and I know that this goes, goes against what a lot of other people's personal opinion is, okay, uh, but my personal opinion is that you should go into a niche that is a competitive niche where lots of people want to purchase something in that niche. I do not buy into the whole idea that you should go into a niche that is your passion just because it's your passion and that you should go into a niche that has no competition just so that you can be the big fish in a very little pond. There's a problem with no competition in today's market is that there's probably no competition for a reason. And if there's no competition, it's great. It might feel good to be the only big fish in a, in a very small pond, but if there's no buyers in that pond, you're in an empty, dry hole. And so all of that to say, find a niche where other people are actually making some money. And one easy way to do that is go somewhere like Amazon.com where people are proven to spend money on information and find out what are the areas where people really spend a lot of information. What I have experienced is that the, the topics that perform well on online bookstores perform really well as an entire product funnel. Um, the next thing that somebody needs to do is they need to come up with a domain name. And now this is something that some people will take a full 30 days to decide on the perfect domain name for them. And then as soon as they've done their first $1,000, they look back and they realize they still chose the wrong domain name. Because of this, I recommend that people take no longer than 15 minutes to choose a domain name. Just choose it. 
It's not that important. Now, granted, when you have your empire and you have lots of things that you want to have in, in place, you may want a perfect domain name. But you're a brand new beginner. I'm speaking to a brand new beginner here in, the, in, in, in this, you know, in this case, this 30-day case. So if someone is a brand new beginner, they will have no idea what that perfect domain name is going to be. So don't even try. Just come up with something that matches your your niche, matches your niche, and is available. Register it. If you spend more than 15 minutes on it, you're probably spending too much time. The next thing that people need is web hosting. Um, um, it, it can be very simple web hosting. It can be. I recommend that it be. Um, I recommend that it not be the absolute cheapest one that somebody can find. And here's why. I don't want. I don't want to say that always or even usually, but much of the time, very, 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 very cheapest package is the very, very cheapest package for a reason. It might have a very limited amount of bandwidth or space, or if it if it says it has unlimited, but because it's so cheap, the web hosting company oversells it, then just because you've got all this bandwidth, if somebody goes to your website and tries to, to open it, it takes five seconds or ten seconds to open because there's just not enough space on that server. So I recommend that someone um, look for, they can have a basic service, they can have one that's inexpensive, but probably not the absolute cheapest one out there. Um, I I, well, I really want to be careful here that I don't recommend a tool that other people – let me say this. I'm going to recommend a particular source type of web hosting um, interface. If, if you have a favorite one that's not the one that I'm going to suggest, just keep using the favorite one. I'm just suggesting this is it's one that I've used. It's one that I'm comfortable with. It's one that I think beginners could figure out really easily. There's plenty of tutorials out there, and that's cPanel. So I would recommend that if somebody gets web hosting, that they get web hosting with cPanel. I would also recommend that if, if for a few dollars a month more, somebody could get unlimited domains or unlimited space or things like that for a couple dollars more a month, just go ahead and do it. Again, you're going to live with this web hosting for as long as you choose to have it. You can always switch in the future. You know, your 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 goal is to make a thousand dollars the first month, and then if you make a thousand, you should make more than that. What's a few dollars on web hosting? Don't go for the cheapest one. Okay, the next thing that someone needs to do, and so far all these things could probably be accomplished in an hour, deciding a niche, you know, 20 minutes, domain name, 15, 20 minutes, buying web hosting, 20 minutes. The next thing that someone needs to do, and the next few things that I'm going to give, they could probably this just through the basic tutorial in their web hosting account. I'm going to give it just so that I have a complete demonstration here. The, the first thing that I'd recommend is that people go in and create their FTP access, okay, or they may be given it when they open their web hosting account. So even if somebody has no idea what that means right now, it's okay. Just create it. Create it and write it down and put it in a safe place, their username and their password and, and um, you know, any other information. They, may, they might need their uh, they might need a couple other pieces of information that the web host will give them that, that goes along with FTP access. Okay? The next thing that someone needs is they need some type of service to upload their web files to their web host. I do not recommend, although for a beginner it might actually be easier this way, but unless someone is a total green thumb when it comes to the Internet, like they can't even, up, they can't even attach a file to an email, then I would recommend that they plan on using FTP, so they need some type of FTP service. Um, a FileZilla is the one that I use. Again, if somebody's in love with a different one, use the one you know. Okay, there's, there's probably ones out there that are easier than FileZilla, and there's a few out there that are probably more complex. I use it, so I'm, recomm I'm just simply not even recommending it, just saying, hey, that's an option if you don't have any others, but if you have one you use, use it. Again, I want to make this concrete enough that people can make the money, but I also don't want these instructions to be so binding that people, you know, if somebody already knows how to use one FTP client, you know, why take the three hours that it might take to learn how to use the one I use when it's perfectly okay for them to use theirs? Okay, right. once they've got these pieces in place, and again, that's something that could take another, you know, download FileZilla or something similar, 10 minutes, create FTP. I probably, my guess is that most web hosting accounts just send over that access in the first email you get anyway. So now we're talking an hour and a half. 
Um, the next thing I believe someone needs to do is do what I did when I started my business, and that is create a squeeze page. Um, what I recommend for create, creating a squeeze page is not using some fancy website software that you have to learn to use because you're a beginner. Okay, again, we're talking to beginners here. If somebody already has, you know, knows how to create websites, hey, create it on your own. My recommendation is go to Google, Google squeeze page templates. Buy a squeeze page template package that comes with like 100 templates that are already coded for HTML and that you can just follow their directions and upload. I just, I believe it's worth the investment, whatever it is, just buy the templates. That's the easiest thing for a brand new beginner. The next thing that someone needs in order to be able to create that squeeze page, by the way, definition of squeeze page, since we are talking raw beginners here, a squeeze page, and my definition is a web page that has as its only purpose the opting in of subscribers. So for me, a squeeze page would have a headline, it would have a, an offer to give away a free ebook of five to ten pages, or a, a MP3 that could be anywhere from 10 minutes to 70 minutes, and then there would be a call to action that says, hey, if you want to download this free ebook or download this free MP3, put your name and email address below, and there would be a little opt-in box for people to put their name and email address. Okay, now, sometimes what is tempting for people to do when they first start out, they're, they're so scared of investing in something like an autoresponder before they've made any money that they, they'll, they'll sometimes try to spend hours and hours and hours trying to figure out how to make an HTML box that will allow them to collect somebody's name and email address. I recommend that they simply don't do it. Use an autoresponder service immediately. Your goal is $1,000 the first month. Um, I believe the company I use, I use a number of different companies. For my my autoresponders, I have I have lists on multiple different companies. The one that I recommend, though, for a raw beginner is Aweber. Okay, and uh, my recommendation is just go get the Aweber account. Um, my, you know, that that'd be my recommendation. Just go get the Aweber account, and then follow the simple tutorial. There's like a 15 minute tutorial that shows you how to set it up, set your first list up, and create a web form. And then follow the directions that are in the squeeze page template package you bought to copy and paste the template that Aweber gives you into the squeeze page. And then upload it to your web host following your web host's direction for the FTP access. And I know this sounds confusing. If somebody is a brand new beginner, please just do this one step at a time. And by the time you get to this step, if you've done all the other steps I've given you, if you've done them, instead of just listening, they won't sound like Greek or Latin anymore. Uh, would you agree with that, Mark, based on your experience as well? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, everything you've gone over so far, I, I mean, you could literally have this done the same day. If you really were motivated, sat down at your computer and had this list in front of you, you could literally get this done in, you know, easily the same day, if not just a few hours. I mean, it, it wouldn't take that much at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ab absolutely, literally a few hours. Uh, but if someone were to second-guess things and be concerned that they didn't know how to do the next step before they finished the first one, they could spend a month. And I've seen people do it. I've, sent, I've seen people spend three months doing just the steps I've just given, and I've seen other people do it in hours. You know, so Absolutely. And, and, you know, and I've done it as well. I'm sorry. I, I hate to interrupt like that, but I, I can tell you, I mean, I've done it. I mean, just the, the, the niche market alone, people will drive themselves you know, crazy over um, you know, this list that you've given so far, I mean, it's absolutely step-by-step, step and, and it's it's right on the money, I guarantee it. So, yeah, <laughs> I, fantastic. And these are the things that, that people that have just that, – that are just sitting down at the computer going, okay, I, I want to make money online. How do I do it? This is what you need right here. Yeah, absolutely. And then obviously if we're talking to somebody that's been online for two years that still hasn't made their first $1,000, they've got all these, these steps in place, excellent. They can skip yeah. all of those steps and just go to the next things I'm going to teach about, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. Okay, so, um, and, and I really want to note that on all of these things, I have not been talking about free options. You know, I, I, I'm, I hear so many times that when people are telling people to get started online, you know, they'll, they'll really stress the fact that you can get, like, free hosting here and you can get free autoresponder here and you can get free squeeze page here. And, you know, the bottom line is as soon as you make your first $1,000, you've got to get away from all those free tools anyway because they're just not robust enough. And so my opinion is if you're serious about doing the work to make the money, 
just buy the paid services so that you don't have to change things. You know, uh, all of these services, any of these that you say, okay, I'm just going to get the free version, it might take you ten times as long to do the work. And in, if you're trying to make $1,000 in 30 days, time is money. And if you spend a lot more time because you're not willing to invest 20 here or 50 there or whatever, I just believe it's a disservice. So I wasn't even planning on talking about that, but it just popped into my head, and I thought, I, I just want to be clear on that. The next yeah. thing that someone, I believe someone needs to do, they certainly need to do it if they're going to follow my system exactly. Now, we were talking about four pillars earlier, and there's many different ways to do the first pillar, which is traffic. Now, the way I do it, the way I'm an expert, the way I've done it for years, the way I built my business, the way I still build my business, you know, is article marketing. That's how I drive traffic. And I've driven traffic that way from almost day one. I still drive traffic that way. I have no intention of changing that. I still start all my clients off that way. Some of my clients, that's the only way they drive traffic, and that's about the only way I drive traffic. And it's, uh, I probably could make the statement that's the only profitable way I drive traffic. Uh, that would not be true. There's one other source of traffic that I use, um, article marketing traffic, to help me drive a little bit of JV traffic, and so that's also profitable. But this is how I drive my traffic. Now, in order to effectively drive article marketing traffic the way that I do it, you need an easy and articles account. Okay, now, let me just give you some background on easy and articles. Easy and articles is the premier article directory on earth. I believe that wholeheartedly. I don't believe there's many people on earth that would disagree with me. Okay? And, and if they were to disagree with me, I would wonder if they weren't personally connected with another article directory. Okay? So, I believe they're the number one premier. I also know from my own tracking stats that almost all of my profitable traffic comes through easy articles. Okay, now, obviously, because of the fact that I've tested that and proved that early on in my business, now it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because that's where I put most of my time, energy, and money is in easy articles. Now, the reason that I want, I believe that someone should get an easy article account the very first day, even though they may not use it until day 10, is because an easy articles account, because of the fact that they're premier and because of the fact that Anybody that wants to succeed in article marketing wants to go there. And because of the fact that there's a lot of spam and fraud that goes on in article marketing, because they're number one, they have lots of filters in place to filter out the spam and to filter out the yahoos that come along and want to join them, have an account, and start spamming them immediately. And so they have some filters in place. One of the filters that they have in place is that they don't just give people an unlimited license to submit articles right away. They have a system that I believe the way it currently stands now, and, and I'm just going to give this to you as an example. I believe it's the way it stands now, but if in the future the filter changes, it probably is just the numbers that change. They have a system where basically you get a trial account when you first open up where you're allowed to submit 10 articles. And if you submit 10 good, strong articles, they'll give you, like, another 25 uh, as a second trial. And then if you pass that and you submit nice 25 articles, then they allow you to have something like unlimited access. Okay, now, at any point, if you submit trash articles, then they can suspend your account, they can cancel your account, whatever the case is. Okay, so all is well and good. The only drawback when someone starts their easy articles account right away even once they submit those first 10 articles, is that because there's many other people that are doing the very same thing, it can take two to three weeks for those first 10 articles to get approved. And then once those articles are approved, it can take another 10 days to two to three weeks to get the next 25 approved. Okay, now the problem is part of our strategy for 30 days is going to be able to be submitting unlimited numbers of articles to using articles. And if there's two periods of 10 to to three, 10 days to three weeks before someone could submit unlimited articles, okay, that would put us outside of the initial 30 days. So what I recommend is Easy Articles has a paid service, okay, Easy Articles has a paid service that does not impact the editorial process at all. However, what it does is when you submit an article to them, whether you're in the first 10 days, you're in the next 25 days, you're in or next first 10 articles or next 25 articles or the unlimiteds, you get 
preferential treatment in the speed at which and the order in which your article can be looked at by the editorial staff. Now, the editorial staff does not approve it just because you're paying. Okay, All it does is pushes you to the front of the line. Now, there's a huge difference between 10 articles being approved in three weeks or 10 articles being approved in, I don't know the exact time frame. I know that for me, because I'm a long-time platinum premier member with thousands and thousands of articles, I can submit an article now, and if they're not on lunch break, if I don't submit it right around noon, okay, it's probably going to be published live in 15 minutes. Okay. Now, I don't know exactly how long it takes for the first 10 or the first 25, but my guess is with the premium, it's, it's still less than a day or two. Okay, so my recommendation is, even if you don't want to pay for premium access for the rest of your life, okay, if you don't want to pay for it every month like I do, I recommend getting it for the first 30 days. You can always cancel it on down the road, but buy it right up front so that you get your articles looked at very quickly and so that if you're writing good articles, okay, and, and they're not suspending your account because you're submitting trash, that you will be able to submit as many articles as possible within a few days. Does that make sense, Mark? Absolutely makes sense. And, and you know, speed is of the essence. Like you said, uh, time is money. And, you know, the goal here is to get $1,000 in 30 days, and this is what it takes. So definitely a great way to go. Yeah, I mean, here we are really are talking about speed. I mean, you're, you know, we're really pushing the issue here. You know, I've already made it clear that if somebody doesn't do all of these things in just the right order and, and they don't have their ducks in a row, basically, that, look, it's not going to happen. And that, it, you know, it might take a few more days than this. You might only do $854 or you may go over and do $1,219 or, you know, whatever the case is. But it, really, speed is of the essence. I mean, this isn't about, you know, hey, how can I create $1,000 with no investment up front and maybe it'll take me a year. You know, is that a possibility? Yeah, sure. It might be possible online to make $1,000 your first year with no investment up front. Okay. I know I've always made investments. So, you know, I've always been a big proponent of if I can make an investment that'll save me a few hours, then, hey, let me make it. And so that's, that's where I built my business, you know. And um, so, I'm, you know, we're definitely talking about some small investments here. But in, I believe that these investments are necessary to really speed this thing up. And really, if somebody does all the work, they're getting all their investment back plus a lot more in a, in a hurry. Okay, so right. now that they've got their easy and articles account and they have their squeeze page, we're, we're assuming they have all of this. They could have done this in the first day, and now they've got 29 days left, which is fair. If, if they know that it's going to take them a few more days than this because – whatever the reason is. Maybe they're just doing evenings. Maybe they're totally a raw rank beginner, and they don't even know what some of the words I've used so far mean, and they have to go look them up. Maybe they need to do those the week before they start their first 30 days, and just be a recommendation. But once somebody has their squeeze page in place, and they have their easy articles account in place, before they even have a single product to sell, okay, I believe they need to begin writing articles in their niche area. Okay, now, I know this sounds really counterintuitive because, hey, if you don't have anything to sell, why would you get subscribers and why would you generate traffic? Again, we're talking about a quick 30-day plan. We're not talking about something that is a a year-long plan. We're talking about making something happen very, very, very quickly. And to digress just a moment, my concept of product creation and even affiliate marketing promotion is, my personal belief is that we should never go out and create a product or even find an affiliate product without having people who already demand that product. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make online is they wake up one night at 2 o'clock in the morning, they have a bright idea. It may be a wonderful idea. It might be an Einstein genius level of an idea of a product that everybody on the earth will love. It's a perfect product. And they go out and they spend a year making this perfect product, and then they find out that somebody else beat them to it where they find out that somebody else already markets this product and they just didn't know it. Or they find out that nobody wants it as bad as they do. And I find the same thing with affiliate marketing. You know, people go and they they try to find the product that everybody else is. Now, well, let me say this. If everybody else is selling a product, an affiliate product, hey, now we've got some proof there's some some demand, okay? But I think that the poor problem is when people go out there and they say, I'm going to find some affiliate products that I really like and I'm just going to try to find ways to sell these really believe you've got to start with the people first and hey we've got 30 days to make the money it's okay if we spend 10 days just driving the traffic 
okay? We, we kind of like a, a, um, a sandwich shop that does kind of a weird grand opening. They say, you know what, we want to be this premier sandwich shop in the entire city, and we're willing to sacrifice one week's worth of sales to make that happen. And so the first week that we're open, we're just going to have unlimited sandwiches. It's a free-for-all. Come in, you get your sandwich for free. There's no obligation at all. For one week, have your sandwich for free. Now, is that organization going to go in the hole the first month? Of course. They might give away $10,000 worth of bread. They might give away $20,000 worth of bread. And that might be a problem if they were just going to be a small little neighborhood sandwich store that only wants to do a few thousand dollars a month and pay the bills. That might be a problem. But if they want to position themselves as being the premier sandwich shop in a town of 1,000 people, what a better way to invest ten or $20,000 than to just give away a bunch of sandwiches. Okay? And so if people in the 30-day period can just think of their first 10 days as giving themselves away and not making any money just to get the subscribers, that's what I think they should do. Okay? And that's exactly the same thing I do in my niches. If I start something new, I'm giving away first. I don't make any money on my brand new subscribers. Sometimes they might buy something the first day, but I mean, even though I have products in line, most people don't buy the first day anyway. Most people don't buy the first 10 days, even though I have dozens of products that are, that, that, that are there. Okay? And so the brand new beginner, they just don't need to create a product first. Okay, I've hammered that one home, probably hammered too much, but that's okay. <laughs> the articles, there's plenty of good material online. I've obviously got a course on it, okay, but there's plenty of good material online. People could probably search YouTube and find out how to write an article. I'll give a quick lesson right here. I like to have a title that includes um, – um, I mean, let's go backwards in time on the articles before I even talk about a title. How do we come up with ideas? Okay, again, this is a this is a one lesson type of a thing where um, I mean, I all of these items that I've, we've talked about already, not all the ones we talked about already, but certainly much of what we're going to talk about so far. My four pillars. I mean, I could probably teach for. 10 hours, and in fact, on some of these items I have, I've got like 10-hour CD programs that teach on each one of these topics. And so to try to compress any one of these topics into five minutes, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's very, very delicate balance, okay? And so okay. keywords is something that I could probably teach on for an hour or two, okay? And the idea with, 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 with keywords that most people see with keywords is they believe the common line out there that says, that if you just find lots of find keywords that lots of people search on, okay, but there's not lots of competition for, then um, you'll be a winner, okay. And and I know that I'm totally butchering the idea, okay. But for anybody that's been exposed to that thought, you now you know exactly what I'm talking about. This idea that people focus on keywords as the driving force. Now I have an I have an opinion that I've shared with my highest level coaching clients in the past. It takes more time than we have here to do this, but. I have an opinion that most of the time when people are searching for keywords, they are not ready to take action yet, okay? They, when you think about it for you, you're, you, you, when you're looking for information online, do you type in one or two keywords and then go buy something? Or do you type in a keyword and you look at the results and they're not right and so you type in another one and you're getting better but it's not right and you, 15 keywords later, you finally just give up and you type in a question and then you find eight answers to your question. That's like, have you ever had something like that happen to you, Mark? Oh, yeah. Yeah, many a time. <laughs> I'm famous so, for that probably. <laughs> if I could make money doing that, I'd be doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. All of those keywords that people are typing in, okay, don't make anybody any money. In my opinion, they make a few people money, okay? They, they make the pay-per-click search engines money, and, and, and people stumble on keywords. You can do some keyword marketing. I believe there's a better way because I believe that most of the time when people actually get involved in your website, they're typing in a meaningful phrase. They're not typing in a keyword you can find in a keyword tool. They're typing in a meaningful phrase. So what happens is so many people, they go through this process of finding a list of 100 keywords that work for them. They write lots of articles on those 100 keywords. They end up finding that only three of those keywords are driving 97% of their profit, and so they stop writing on the other 97 and just the three. Okay, now my opinion is, look, just skip the whole 97 process and go straight 
to the questions. Okay. My belief is that people who are asking questions online, those are the people that really need your help and those are the people who buy from you. Okay. And so what I recommend to beginners is don't go looking for keywords. Go looking for questions. Now, there's many places you can find questions online. You can find forums. So if, if whatever your niche is, type in your niche plus forum into the search engine, and you'll probably, depending on your niche, you'll come up with some forums that are in your niche. Go in, join the forum if you need to to read the post. If you don't, don't. And read all the posts. What are people asking questions about? And every single time you see a question, write it down on a piece of paper. So if somebody in your niche asks how to do this, how to do that, what's the way to do this, write that question down. What does it mean if somebody asks a question in a forum? It means that they've probably already Googled online and couldn't find their answer. So they logged into the forum and asked the question. Because most people, I believe humans are rational, efficient individuals at their core. I, I really believe that. Okay, and that. Some people would argue that, but that, that's not the issue here. I personally believe that humans are rational and efficient at their core. Now, we have tons of things that come along in our day that persuade us not to be rational, that persuade us not to be efficient and to waste our time and all these kinds of things. But I think at our core, we're rational. And I believe, for me, that when I'm rational, if I can find a solution in Google or Yahoo in two minutes, I'm going to go with that solution rather than spending 15 minutes in a forum. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So my feeling is, and I've proved this out time and time again in the actual work that's done, okay, but again, we don't have time for all the proof, but if someone takes the time to type in a question in a forum, in my mind, that means that they couldn't find an answer just by Googling. And so if there's no answer online just by Googling, guess what? It means that that question is under-answered online, and that's the question you need to answer. And if you answer that question in your article, your article is going to come up high in Google the next time somebody else has the same question. And then, instead of people having to go to a forum, they can go to your article. Does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense. That's a great way. I, I, you know, I'd be honest with you, I've never, I've always done the keyword search thing. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, um, I'm writing this down, trust me. Very good. This this method works like clockwork. Now, you don't have to just use forums. You can go to Yahoo Answers and, you know, go. it's basically like a forum. Okay, but you can go in there and you find out what questions people are asking. You could go to AskJeeves.com and find out what people's questions are that they're asking. Um, I haven't ever tried this before, but you could probably even just type in questions plus your niche, and you'd probably find a whole bunch of questions in Google or Yahoo. Okay. So these are all ways that somebody can find out the questions people are answering, asking. Then what I recommend is when you write your article, don't worry about keywords. Write your article answering the question. There's two ways to, excuse me, there's two ways to do this. One is your title would be the question. So the question might be, how do you do X, Y, and Z? Great. That's your article title. Okay? Or it could be the question of it. Well, the question is, how do you do? And the answer would be, how to do. You could literally write two articles on each one of these. One would be the how to do X, Y, Z, and the other would be, how do you do X, Y, Z. Okay, now, now, the, although I've downplayed the significance of keywords for the idea of finding out what people are searching for, that means something, okay, there is a place for optimizing keywords for the search engines. Okay? And so what I recommend is that when you type in your article title that said how to do X, Y, Z, okay, whatever X, Y, Z is, okay, let's say, let's use, well, I hate to bring examples in, so I'm not going to. X, Y, Z is whatever something is in your niche. That will become your keyword, okay? And so what you could do, and what this, this next step will do, and please don't take this too far, because we, you, you don't want to take this one tidbit that I'm giving you about keywords and then go back and just become a slave to keywords again. Okay? So now that you've become a non-slave to keywords, now you can add keywords back in a little bit. Now you could say, okay, that's my keyword. What you could do is make sure that you use that keyword once or twice in your article. Now, if you, it, I could have totally left that out of this presentation, and you would have done it anyway, right? Because you would have written the title, and it would have been about that, so therefore you would have written about it. All of this to say the focus on keywords is not necessary because just in the process of answering people's questions, 
you will naturally use the keywords that are important. Does that make sense? Absolutely makes sense. Okay. And uh, just real quick on the keywords, I, I, and I don't mean sure. to interrupt, but um, no, do. I know there's a certain percentage that you're allowed kind of a, in your articles and things like that. Could you touch base on that real quick? Um, my experience is with I do not want to go into exact percentages, and here's why. Because they change all the time. They change all the time. Why do they change all the time? Because the search engine, if the search engine comes out and says, okay, this is the percentage you're allowed, what does everybody do? They try to fill the, fill the article up with that percentage. And then as soon as that percentage changes, everybody tries to do, set, to do the other thing. Okay? Everybody is an exaggeration, but people that think that they have to chase this number. Okay? My feeling is ignore the number. Don't worry about it. Write the article according to answering the question. And, in fact, if you answer the question, you may only use the keyword once. You may not have to even use the keyword to answer the question, so don't use it. All of this to say, see, I do not believe that keywords are as important as people make them out. Keywords are important because gurus tell you keywords are important. I know. Mm -hmm. One reason that people continue to believe the keywords are so important is that when you start to sit down and type something into the search engine, you use a keyword. But when you actually go to buy something, you don't use a keyword. You use a question or a phrase related to your actual challenge or problem. Okay, and so even if we were to concede that keywords are an important part of the search world, Okay, the keyword part of the search world is the non-profitable part of the search world. Okay? And since this presentation is all about making a thousand dollars in thirty days, or getting as close to it as possible, this presentation is about profit. And so it would be unethical and immoral of me to propose that people do something that leads to non-profitability just because everybody is teaching that that's the right way to do it. Does that make sense? Absolutely makes sense. And and you know that's a great thing to say, to to bring up is that you know it's exactly like you said you know follow these directions to the T and you'll be way ahead of the game so yeah, absolutely and so what i say is what my suggestion is don't focus on keywords your first 30 days okay and it kind of goes back to what i was saying earlier find a plan and stick with it and by the way if someone were listening to this and they and, and they just totally disbelieve what i just said you know what my recommendation to that person would be? My honest, caring, loving recommendation would be. I don't say this in, 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 in spite or anything. I say go find the person that will tell you what you want to hear, which is use the keywords. Use their system. I'm not being facetious. Use their system for 30 days. Make your $1,000 with their system instead of mine. Nothing wrong with that. And then when you're done with the 30 days, you can go back and evaluate. You Just like I said earlier, the first 30 days don't really matter. I didn't say it quite so harshly, but they don't really matter. The only thing that matters the first 30 days is that you do something that, that, that is a plan, whether it's my plan, your plan, somebody else's plan, the man on the moon's plan. It really doesn't matter. Just follow a plan that somebody else on earth has used Follow the plan. And then at the end of the month, you can go in and, and evaluate it and say, ah, uh, that worked, that didn't work. You know, it's kind of like if somebody is, um, well, I said I want to use examples, but this one's biting at me, okay? And that is because, you know, I, I'll just tell you this. I mean, I, I struggle with, with weight. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a few pounds heavier than I should be. Okay? And so I've done a lot of diets in the last 10 years, okay? And regardless of the fact of whether they work or not or which ones I chose or whatever the case is. Okay, if, if we think about someone who's a little bit overweight and they're going to start losing weight, and let's say they've never done it before and they're a total beginner, what would be better for them? To go study losing weight for a whole year and figure out what the best way to lose weight is or just follow somebody's plan for 30 days and then at the end of 30 days look at the plan and say, oh, I don't think those ab exercises work like I think that what worked better was um, the back exercises, or I think what worked better was having more vegetables. I don't think that cutting back on the meat was as effective, and I'm just throwing things out there. But if somebody just studied it instead of doing it, it didn't matter what diet it was. It doesn't matter what exercise plan it was. It's better than nothing. Do it, and then after 30 days, you can go back in and say, ah, I don't like that part. Let's find something else. 
that's what I recommend here. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to write an article. We've got our topic. Our topic is something we found on a forum. We're going to write a topic. We're going to write an answer. Now, if you're a naturally prolific person, just write three or 400 words and answer the question. I mean, really, if somebody asks you a question, if you were, if you were sitting at lunch over a sandwich with a friend of yours and they asked you a question, would you have a formula for answering their question? like a 300-word formula that started out with a formula for the first sentence and a formula for the second and eight bullet points, or would you look at them in the eyes and you'd say, well, John, well, let me think about that for a second. Uh, you know what, John, if I was in your shoes, this is what I would do. And you'd just start talking, and a couple of minutes later, your, your buddy would look back at you and he'd say, thanks for the advice. W which one of those do you think you'd use, Mark? Oh, absolutely, the second one. I mean, you know, you want... Natural conversation. That's what that's what's most comfortable for almost everybody. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Now that's what I believe an article should be. I honestly don't believe that an article should be a formula. Okay, now I can hear people. You know me, and you you bought some of my price before, and I've given you a formula. Okay, and you're going to say, oh well, you gave me a formula. You're right. I gave you a formula because people come to me begging for a formula. People come to me begging for a formula because. They're, they're not willing to do it the way I just gave, okay? And so because of that, I give a formula. But I, in my opinion, you don't even need a formula. You just write three or 400 words as if you were talking to your best friend answering the question. Okay, now, if you're not a prolific person, if you've never written anything in your life before, if you really want to crutch, use the formula. It's okay. And in fact, if you notice with my articles, my articles use a formula. Why? Because I don't write my own articles anymore. And when you have other people writing hundreds of articles, and you just, if I were to just go out there and say, write whatever you want, okay, I might be sorely disappointed in what came out. So therefore, because of the fact that I outsource it all, okay, <laughs> those articles have to be written according to a formula. And so that's one area where you can't really look at my business and do what I do. Do what I say on this. If I personally write an article, personally, and I might write one or two a month these days, okay? If I personally write it, I don't use a formula. I write it just personally. And, in fact, if you went to my Easy Articles account and you looked at my first few hundred articles, okay, you probably would find it. I haven't done this in a long time, so I don't know exactly what's there. But you would probably find that they're just, they just sound like you're sitting across the coffee table from me, it, that they're not using a formula, okay? So formulas come in on down the road when you're trying to systematize things. But your first 30 days, you're not systematizing. Just write. Okay, now, having said all of this, I can hear some people saying, please, just give me a formula. So what do you think, Mark? Should I give a little three- or four-step formula for this? Well, you know, I think that would probably be beneficial for some of us out there. <laughs> okay, then I'll break down and I'll give a formula. If I all had right. to use a formula, this is what I would do. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you a formula for a 300-word article. You can make a 400-word article, a 600-word article, a million-word article using my formula. All you have to do when you see it, you just, you just divide it differently, okay? You just divide it up differently, that's all. So a 300-word article, okay, would be divided into a third for the introduction and two-thirds for the explanation, okay? So the first third would be 100 words if it was a 300-word article. If it's a 600-word article, it would be 200 words, okay? Mm -hmm. So the first, okay. the first section is going to be an introduction. Okay, now, what I have found is a really easy way to do an introduction. It comes to about 100 words. Okay, and, again, I'm not going to use a specific niche um, for this, but we're, we're going to use XYZ and ABC for this, okay? So we, our, our title of our article is How to Do XYZ. My first sentence is probably going to read something like this. In this article, I am going to tell you all about how to do XYZ. The reason I am going to tell you how to do XYZ is because, and then I'm going to explain why people have a problem with XYZ, because the only reason I would be teaching people about XYZ is because they're having a problem, right? Right. Okay, so I'm going to give a reason. Okay, and then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to summarize what those steps are to solving whatever this problem is. And so my next sentence would be, in this article, I'm going to teach you 
And then I would just delineate the four or five or six things that I'm going to teach somebody that, that get them to X, Y, Z. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And that's about 100 words. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that sentence that I just wrote that says, I'm going to teach you, and then I wrote out four or five different things. I'm just going to write uh, maybe 40 words for five of those. I'm just going to write 40 words a piece on how to do each one of those. That gives me a 300-word article. Now, I can make those bullet points, so I could have five bullets of 40 words a piece. I could have five numbered, A, B, C. I could have them numbered, one, two, three, four, five. I could have them listed A, B, C, D, E, okay? If I had four topics, I'd have four of 50 words. Okay, now, do I cut it off at exactly 50 words? No, I don't. I mean, if it takes me 75 words to write the first point out, then I just know that I can go a little light on the next few points. And then maybe the next few points they go a little over to, well, who cares? Now I have a 375-word article instead of 300. Does that make sense? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a resource box on the article. Now, the resource box, the resource box is what the article directories call the area that you are allowed to give, like, your little call to action, because that's the exchange, okay? The, the whole thing about article marketing is that article directories are willing to allow you to have a little blurb on your article in exchange for them being able to have your content on their site. It's like a... Uh, a symbiotic relationship, okay? What are they, is, is that what it's called when you have, like, in Africa, you have an elephant, and then there's, like, a bird that lives on his back, and, and is it symbiotic? I believe so. <laughs> I think it's symbiotic. I believe Somebody, you're right. Some, some uh, animal person will probably correct me and tell me that it's something else, because I know there's a few different types of relationships. There's, there's, like, a relationship where the elephant and the bird both get just as much out of it, and then there's, like, parasitic where, you know, the, the, parasite gets more out of the relationship than the other person. You, you know what I'm talking about. I think it's called yeah. symbiotic. And in article directory, in when article marketing, it's symbiotic. The article directory gets the content, and you get the call to action. That's the way it works. Okay. So what, what I want to do is talk about this call to action, because this call to action is critically, critically important. The call to action is going to be what gets people to your website. Okay, now, the call to action is a bridge from your article to your website. They read the article. They have to now have a reason to go to your website. Now, there's a few different approaches we could use for this. One approach would be, look, do you want more information like this article? If so, go to my website. Okay, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is um, this article has been written by and then the name of the expert, okay, and this article, this expert has 12 gold medals in his topic, and he's twice educated with a Ph.D., and he has all this experience, and if you'd like to learn more about this expert, then click on his website. That would be another way to do it. And then another way to do it would be, would you like to learn more about this topic? If so, download my free ebook. Okay, now, Mark, you've probably seen all three of those methods used on articles before. Am I right? Absolutely right, yep. Yep, absolutely. Unfortunately, number two, I think I see more than, and I was a little facetious when I said 12 gold medals, but that's the one I see more than any other one, I think. When I, if you just go zooming around easy in articles, you, I believe you see more of the, I'm, I'm, I've done this, 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 and this, and so please come visit me. I think I see more than that, and you know, people could test me out. But let me ask you this. Which do you think is more effective? The first one, which says, you know, do you want to read more articles? The second one, which says, look, I'm an expert. Do you want to see how decorated I am? Or the third one that says, look, I'm going to give you a 10-page free ebook that will give you more info. Which one do you think works better? Oh, absolutely, the third one. I mean, anytime somebody sees free, they, they, they're intrigued if it's a – if it's a, a topic that they're interested in already. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and Mark, you're right. And if ever anybody on the phone on, on this uh, this this uh, listening in is thought that or asked, or, you know, that was their their answer, they're absolutely right. That's the one that works the best. And that's not the one you see the most. So if if somebody's trying to learn article marketing by seeing what everybody else does, then they might get it wrong. Okay, this is what works. 
And so what I like to do, my third formula is one I've taught my clients for years. It's the one I've used for years. I've changed it recently by a couple of words for filtering reasons. Okay, and let me please explain that so that nobody gets confused. Okay, because this is one of those areas where, you know, we talk about do what I say, not what I do. Okay, because of the fact that I get so much traffic to my website, okay, it's a problem that most beginners don't have. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Definitely. Okay. The problem we'd like to have, but yeah. Yeah, we'd like to have it, okay? And when I was a beginner, I didn't have this problem either, okay? And because this, this particular lesson is designed for beginners, we have to assume that anybody studying this right now does not have this problem of getting too much traffic, okay? Now, you may argue that there's no such thing as too much traffic, just find a way to sell to them. But in my case, in my case, I build personal relationships with people rather than just send them a whole bunch of affiliate offers all the time, okay? That's just me. That's my personal model. And so what happens is when I got to this point where I was getting too much freebie-seeking traffic and I was having to weed out the people who just didn't want to invest at all, at all, and just literally wanted to leech off of me for free for all of their life, okay, right. whether – they legitimately couldn't afford it or they just wanted to leave, whatever the case is. And I, I hope I'm not coming across negative. I probably am, but it's not designed to be negative. I'm, I'm just simply saying the fact that I had too much traffic and that I was unable to give everybody the personal attention I like to. And so because of that, I took the free part out of my resource box, and it's cut down on leads quite a bit. However, the leads are much higher quality, and, and I have much better con conversations with people. I'm building tighter relationships. But for the beginner, I say go for the leads. Get as many as possible, okay? So what, what I've thought for years, what I did for years until I made that change recently, okay? And by the way, let me say this. That may not be a permanent change, okay? Over time, I might say, you know what? I don't care. I'm just going to bring in more people and... You know, who cares if I can't spend as much time with each person? I don't know that, that it will or will not happen, okay? I'm just trying to be really transparent about why what I'm teaching is a little bit different than what someone might see on a current article, okay? Um, okay. But what my, my formula is something along these lines. At the end of the article, write something like this. By the way, would you like to know more about whatever the article's about? If so... Download my brand new free ebook, Ten Steps Two, and then whatever the article is about. And then they click over. Then there's a link to your squeeze page that we've already created in this program. And the squeeze page says, "Download my free ebook, The Ten Steps to X Y Z." Okay. And then right. somebody puts in their name and email address, and they get the free ebook, and they're on your list. Do you, you see how how that works? Absolutely. That, that's a <laughs> Brilliant way to go because it, it's a hell of a lot easier than what I used to do. I'll tell you that. <laughs> hey, Sean, can I ask you real quick? Just just one quick question. Now, um, let's assume that maybe uh, you know the, the the steps these guys are taking. Um, they they get into it and they're they're ready to maybe rather than give the free ebook away right away. Even the ebook that you sell, I, I'm going to assume here that it's not a high dollar, you know, seventy seven dollar ebook, correct? I mean, is it is it kind of on the lower end or? Well, that's the catch with ebooks these days. And, and I'll tell you, when I started out online, the e you could charge, in my opinion, and this is totally opinion, and again, it really has a lot to do with quality. I mean, I can still write an ebook today that could command a hundred bucks for the ebook. I mean, that I could probably write a ten page manual on some of my deepest secrets and a few people would be willing to pay me a thousand dollars for the ten page manual. And you could probably call that an ebook. Okay. So I right. just want to be really clear that we're talking about a beginner. We're talking about the normal ebook market. And frankly, in my opinion, over the last few years, really the value of ebooks has gone way down, like what people are willing to pay for them. And I'll be honest with you, in my product creation these days, if I want a $97 product, I, I do a recording. And really for me, I mean, two, a couple hours worth of recording, I can teach as much as, as a 60 page ebook, and it takes me two hours instead of typing out, you know, 40 hours to get 60 pages. So, right. In my opinion, people long run 
are, are much better off creating a, a recorded product than an ebook. Now, for beginners, you got to start somewhere. And so, to answer your question, well, I hate to be too general here, but yeah, you're you're absolutely right, Mark. That that first ebook is probably not going to have a stiff price on it. I mean, you, 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 it's being written by a beginner that's probably just rehashing researched information online. It's not like they're offering unique perspectives on things based on their own five years of experience and a niche. I mean, it's probably going to be something that needs to have a lower price tag on it. Is that kind of what you're referring to here, Mark? Yeah, I was. And, you know, I just wanted to bring up the point that, you know, that – after you get started, these are the steps you want to take as well. I mean, you know, j- just like Sean said, uh, you know, once you've started building your list, and maybe, you know, three, six months down the road, you're getting to the point where you can't write all the articles anymore. You can outsource things. I mean, but you can kick, you know, even if you charge $4 for an ebook, not going to be a ton of money, but it's going to weed out the guys that are only looking for free stuff. So, And buyers are a great list to have. So that's the point I was trying to get to. Okay, that that makes sense. Yeah, and and remember, we're talking about the first thirty days to a thousand dollars, and you know, you could do that with a ten dollar ebook and just sell a hundred ten dollar ebooks and make a thousand dollars. But if you wanted to make a million dollars, you probably wouldn't do it with a hundred thousand ten dollar ebooks. You'd do it with a much <laughs> higher price item. And, and so the first thirty days for somebody are going to look different than five years from now. You know, right, you're right. And I did jump the gun a little bit. I mean, I was just looking forward, I guess, and just wanted to bring up that one little point. But uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 please don't apologize. I think that was hugely valid. I mean, I want this to be really usable information for people. And, and you, you know, I mean, you know, we kind of go back to do what I, what, what I, what I say instead of what I do. I mean, I, this is not my first 30 days in the business. I've been in it for years. So if I'm going to create a new product, you know, I'm going to do a, a, a survey. I may not even do a survey to my list because I already know what they want. If I've been talking to a few people just in chatting anyway, I found out what people want. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to sit down and write an outline. I'm going to record a product. I'm going to go write a sales page, and, and I'm going to go do all this in two days and do a launch tomorrow. Um, but the first, and it's in third, first 30 days, they, they don't have the experience to do that. So I'm not going to personally do – the exact steps. In fact, all my articles now, except for maybe one a month, are written by, you know, my workers. And so, obviously, what somebody's going to do in their first 30 days is going to be different than what you or I might do five years down the road when when we have a thriving business. And so, you know, I just we're trying to be really transparent here with people, really transparent, and really offer some some teaching that people can dig their feet in, their, dig their their teeth into, and actually go get results. You know, rather than wondering, hey, why, why is Sean teaching one thing, but I don't see Sean putting out a ten dollar ebook. You know, why do I see that? And well, right. it's different. If somebody's a brand new beginner versus if, if you've been in the business for years and you've got a different level of expertise. And and there's only one way to gain experience, and that's doing something. You you can't buy experience. You can buy knowledge, but you can't buy experience. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Great. Okay, so now what we've done is um, we, we, we've set up the foundation for driving that initial traffic, okay? Now, um, in driving that initial traffic, the more articles you write, the more traffic you're going to drive if you're writing them according to my formula. Now, if you're going out there and you're looking up a whole bunch of keywords and then you're writing a, 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 an article that's stuffed full of keywords that sounds like it was written by somebody in third grade because of the fact that you stuffed it full of the same word over and over and over again just because you wanted the search engines to see it, and then the human gets to it and they get halfway through it and they go, I wouldn't buy anything from somebody that writes garbage like this, and they click away, then you're, you're, you're never going to get subscribers. And so... You know, as tempting as it is to do things the way that it looks like other people might be doing them, I really challenge you to go out there and write an article that teaches people how to do something. And when you do that and you use the formula the way that I've given you and you don't tweak it, because remember, you're in your first 30 days, and so you're not tweaking things yet. You're waiting until after the first 30 days to start tweaking things. If you simply do it the way that I've given it to you, you will get subscribers. You submit those articles, these are your articles, and you will get subscribers. Okay. <laughs> now, the more articles you write, 
the, the more subscribers you're going to get. Now, what I find that often happens, let's just assume that somebody is going to work full-time for this project. They're work eight hours a day, okay? And what happens is I find that so often they'll spend an hour writing articles and they'll spend seven hours doing all the other things we were kind of mumbling about earlier, you know, email and surfing, and I've been guilty of it. I mean, I've had days, I have days now where I finish the day and I look at what I've done and I say, you know what, I would have been better off to work for half an hour before breakfast, take the day off and go hiking or skiing for the day because I accomplished nothing today. And I have days like that, okay? And so if I have days after being in the business for years and knowing exactly what to do and how to do it, of course, somebody that's never done it before is going to have days like that. And so when I talk about days like that, I'm being loving. I'm not being critical any more than I am critical of myself when I look at my day and I think I would have been better on skiing today. I really would have been. And I might have made more sales because I, I somebody would have bought for me instead of allowing me to talk them out of buying. You know? I mean, really. Yeah, you, you know, I hear you. <laughs> you, know, you. Some days you just say, I wasted my day. And so if we talk about somebody that's been in the business, their their first month and they've got eight hours to work, okay, so far, everything I've just taught can be done in the first few hours or the first day, except for the article writing, and I've given no more instructions. And so in my opinion, what would it hurt for that person to simply write articles for eight hours a day? Absolutely nothing. I mean, that'd be the thing to do. That would be the ideal thing to do. And I'll tell you, I've had clients that come to me and they're like, I just don't know why I'm not making money. I'm writing an article a day, and I've been doing this for two months, and I'm not making any money, or I'm not making enough money. I've sold a book here and a book there. And then I go through that whole exercise of what are you doing with your time, and they go out and they start writing 20 articles a day, and all of a sudden they start making money. And it's just an incredible coincidence. And I'll tell you, this comes from personal experience, because my first, like, three months online, okay, Every day I would get up and I would try to write between 15 and 20 articles every single day. That was the goal when I woke up in the morning. I didn't always make it. And if you look at my actual stats, I missed it by a long shot because my first 10 months, I averaged writing 150 articles per month. And if you divide that by 20 days, that's only seven and a half articles a day. Okay. (laughs) And really when I look back, I think I worked a lot more than that, but but, I mean, the numbers numbers don't lie, okay? Right. And so, on average, I did seven and a half articles a day. Now, I have no idea how I can account for the other days because I specifically remember sometimes getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning and writing for three hours and cranking out 20 or 25 articles. And But I don't ever remember any days I took off. And But, I mean, the math just adds up. I, I, I did seven and a half a day on average. If I had to guess, I did 20 some days, and I did one or two some other days. I, if I had to guess in hindsight, I didn't put a video on myself. So if I had to guess in hindsight, then that's what happened. Okay. Right. On a day that went like it was supposed to, I'd get up at, at 7 o'clock. I'm an early riser, so, you know, somebody could start at noon. It doesn't matter. Okay. But for me, I'm an early riser. 7 o'clock. And I'd write till about 10. Okay. And that, that should be 15 or 20 articles for me. And I know that somebody who's never written an article says, it's going to take me three hours to write my first one. And you know what? You're right. It probably will. But your second one will probably only take two, and your third one will take one. And then if you really think about it, your fourth one might only take half an hour. And then if you re-listen to what I've just taught about just having a conversation instead of overthinking things and thinking about keywords, your fifth one might only take you 20 minutes. Okay, now, if you're really a slow typer, it might take longer. I remember when I first started um, – I, I, I typed about 17 words a minute, okay? Now, I took typing in high school, and so I should have been able to type faster than that. I mean, I know where all the keys are. I mean, I'm not a two-finger typer. But really, 17 words a minute is not very much. I mean, that's yeah, pretty slow, okay? Yeah, I'm in the same and, boat. I hate to say it. Yeah. You know what happened? Here, here's a crazy thing that happened, Mark, is after about nine months, and I have no idea how fast it happened because I wasn't paying attention to it, but after nine months, all of a sudden I woke up one day and I said, I'm not, I must be typing faster inside so time myself. I was at 50 words a minute. I did nothing to get faster except I wrote 1,500 articles. <laughs> That's it. I didn't do any, I didn't take another class. I actually tried take a class. I went online. I'm diverting here, but I guess that's okay. I went online and I actually Googled, um, you know, how to type faster, and I looked at some courses. I think I even downloaded a couple of courses, and I might have done, like, the first 10 minutes of the first day lesson, and after they had me type the letter J 25 times and then the letter L 25 times, 
I said, forget this. I could have written a whole other article. I'm done. And, and I, that's, that's, that's really what happened. I was just like, okay, forget this. So you know, I would probably recommend that if somebody only types in 17 words a minute like I do, take a typing class. But anyway, long story short, nine, ten months later, I was typing at 50. You know, I don't write a lot of articles anymore. I don't type much anymore except to answer emails. The other day, I was curious because I was writing like ten. I was writing either five or ten articles, and I was writing them because I had some thoughts I wanted to get out, and I needed some new content on easy articles for specific reason. I had something I was working on, and so I said, "Well, hey, I'm just going to write. I'm going to write a few thousand words. Let's see how fast I can write." And I think I came close to sixty words. I think for like a few wow. minutes, I was at 60 words a minute, and then I did another test. It was like 55. I don't know if I was getting tired or the first one was aired, but, but I, I've done nothing to get faster. And so all of that to say, if somebody's starting out, sure, it's going to take longer. Of course, it's going to take longer because they're typing slower, but that'll catch up. So all of that to say, just I would write for like three hours. And then back then, before I knew that easy articles was the heads down winner, all afternoon, this is what I would do all afternoon, is – I would literally submit those 10 articles or 15 articles to like 80 different directories. I mean, I had I literally by hand, I would submit them by hand to like 80 different directories. And I had like a system going where like I just knew when I looked at a page, that's where the login is. And bam, go down there, type it in. I mean, I had my password the same on all of them. So I could just auto finish and bam, bam, bam. I mean, I got to where I could submit like 50, 60 articles in an hour. And, you know, it was, it was horrible on the wrists. I mean, it just, just horrible work. And, uh, I, you know, I would, I would never do it again. And, and, um, you know, there's plenty of companies out there that can do it for you really cheap. I pay people to submit all my articles. But all of that to say, that's the level of dedication I had. I wrote for three hours a day and submitted articles for four or five, six hours a day, whatever it took. That's what I did. And obviously in today's market, I don't suggest submitting to 80 directories. Submit to easy articles and call it good your first 30 days. After your first 30 days, there's a few more I might throw in. Your first 30 days, submit it to the one place. Spend your time writing. You know, I don't believe there's any reason that somebody couldn't come online and do double the number, triple the number of articles I did my first month. Instead of doing 150 a month, if you've got eight hours to write, you know, you might go to write 300 or 400 your first month. I don't know. I, I don't know because, I mean, I, I wouldn't do, well, if I had to start from scratch with nothing, that's what I would do. I'd write a lot of articles. Okay, so having said that, um, let's move on. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay, so let's move on. And the next place to go is creating a product. Okay, now. The, before we can create a product, according to what we've discussed today, okay, and not just guessing what people might want to buy, okay, we need some subscribers, and that's why the first week, all we're going to do eight hours a day is write articles. We're going to get some subscribers, and maybe we have 50 or 100 subscribers after a week, okay? Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send an email out, and if you're like me, I mean, this call really isn't about email communication, but if you're like me, I was sending people an email every day, whether it was, hi, how are you? or, hi, welcome to my list. I mean, I didn't know what to do with the, all these subscribers. So, you know, a lot of people just don't do anything because they don't know what to do, or they go find a whole bunch of affiliate offers because they think that's what to do with your new list, is send them a whole bunch of affiliate offers because that's what other people are doing to them is sending them a whole bunch of affiliate offers. And so they just do what they see, and, well, that doesn't really work because that, it just doesn't work. Okay? And yeah, so, but and, I, and I can testify to that because I did that. Uh, I did that. Uh, you know, my first list that I ever started building – I was slamming them with affiliate products, and you know I made a sale here and a sale there, but I I, I was dumbfounded why nobody was buying. It. So yeah, 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 and you, you know we we see people doing that all the time, and that's so one of the dangers that I see people you know they, they they come into internet marketing and instead of getting training from somebody like you or me or somebody else that knows what they're doing has been there done that they just try to copy what they see online, and just because somebody else is doing it doesn't mean it works. You know, if you go into the gym and you see a hundred people taking a class on some brand new method of, of, of fitness that is not proven to work and ends up being proven to like break bones and tear your collagen down just because a hundred people are doing it doesn't mean it's right. And unfortunately, there's so much of that that goes on with brand new people. Instead of buying a course to learn from somebody that's done it, they try to copy what they see. 
And, yeah, sometimes they might do the right things, but sometimes they're going to get in some bad traps. So, anyway, me, I didn't know what to do. I had a sneaking suspicion that sending an affiliate page out every day was not going to work, and so I didn't. And I did things, crazy things, like sending out an email that says, you know, hey, I noticed you joined my list a few days ago. You know, is there anything I can help you with? I mean, really crazy emails like, you know, I see you've been on my list for a week or two, and, and uh, you know, is there anything you'd like me to help you learn? And crazy, and, and you know, the craziest thing was people would write back, and they would say, well, yeah, can you teach me about this? And crazy thing is I would go write an article to teach them how to do it. If I didn't know how to do it, I'd go research. I'd write an article. I'd copy and paste the article into their email, and then I'd copy and paste the article into e Articles, and then I'd have an article on e Articles, and then they were happy, and I didn't charge them for it, and I just sent the answer to them. And they wrote back, and they said, thank you. Wow. Nobody's ever returned my email before when I sent a question like that. Okay, now. Yeah, and that's that's true to, to this day. I mean, that that would – it just never happens. I mean, you know, the, these are all – most of the, the, the emails you get – are done through autoresponders that somebody's created, and they're selling a product. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm not saying that what I did was right or wrong. I'm just saying that, hey, that's what I did. I didn't know what else to do. And so I wrote these questions. I, I built a relationship with people. And then what I would start doing was, and I I, I, I just said, well, you know, what? Do you, I kept asking this question, what do you want to learn about? And I kept writing down the answers, and I would write articles about it. And I kind of talk, talked about this earlier, and so I won't go into that whole history again. But that's what I recommend that people do, is they start building a relationship with people on their list by communicating with them, finding out what they want to learn about, and then write a book about it. Okay, now, once somebody has enough information to know that they're going to write a book about something, they can stop writing articles for the sake of writing articles, and instead they can spend their time writing a book. And as they write their book, every time they write a few paragraphs, they can copy and paste those paragraphs into the easing articles field, put a title on it, and call it an article. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. So what that means is they're killing two birds with one stone. They're getting an ebook written at the same time as they're writing their articles. Okay, and that's what I did with my ebooks. Okay, I wrote my ebooks, and every time I'd written a few paragraphs that made sense together, I mean, obviously they had to, you know, they had to be coherent. So it was a coherent page. I would copy and paste it, and that was another article. And um, then when the, when the ebook was finished, then the next step that I did, and this is what I recommend people for their first 30 days, okay, is don't try to write your own sales letter. You're a beginner. This is your first 30 days. A badly written sales letter from a sales letter creator, okay, that is kind of corny because it doesn't exactly work for you, it's going to be far better than the one you try to write on your own. Wouldn't you agree, Mark, for a brand new beginner? Absolutely agree. That, that's a huge thing. Yeah. So go out and buy a sales letter creator. Now, there's a lot of them out there that are almost like PLR. You can just buy them, and, and, they, and, and they work, okay? But my recommendation is to either buy the one that Marlon Sanders sells or buy the one that Brett McFall sells, okay? And just you can just Google Brett McFall or Marlon Sanders and Sales Letter Creator. There's a bunch of other ones out there. I don't want to say they're not good, okay? But I personally use Brett McFall's, and it's really, really easy to use. I have not personally used Marlon's, but I've personally used tons of Marlon's products before, and every one I've ever used, it's really simple and easy to use. And I had a client a couple of weeks ago that I told her to use the Marlon software, and she created a, a sales letter that looks beautiful from it. So I, I, I don't have personal experience with the Marlon product, but I have a client that did it. It's almost like personal experience. And she went and she bought it. She did it. A couple of days later, she sent me the sales page. It looked great. Okay? So those are the – I would suggest that somebody just go out there and buy one of those. Don't try to write it yourself. We're talking yeah, about just to keep that in frame – I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I interrupted you, but um, just to keep that in, in, uh, in perspective, I spent probably – over a month trying to put together what I consider to be a halfway decent sales letter, and I wrote that thing probably 300 times. You talk about article marketing. I was writing sales letters. And, uh, you know, even at the final outcome, I tried and tried and tried, and it would still, you know, just be average at best. It was just, it was horrible. I mean, I, I thought I was going to lose what hair I got left. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
And the thing is, those sales letter creators, and some of them are more work than others, but these two are really easy to use. Like you just literally fill in the blanks about your product and all the salesy language that, you know, sort of maybe needs to be in a sales letter. It's just all pre-written. And sure, when it comes out the first time, you, you know, you got to change the punctuation. It doesn't always look perfect. But literally in three hours, you could probably have a sales letter that's cornier than what you wrote, okay, but probably converts just as well as the one it took you a month to write. And, yeah. you know, again, long run, that's not a long run solution, but we're talking about 30 days here. And that's what I suggest people do. Okay. So then the next thing that I recommend people do. Now, you know, I'll tell you, I wrestled with this, Mark, because, I mean, as you know, I, I've got a, a, I got a decent sized business. And, and so mm -hmm. I, I don't ever try to do $1,000 on something in 30 days from scratch. I mean, you know, I may do a product launch and do 12 grand in three days, you know, or I might do, you know, I might launch a new niche that, you know, I'm not really putting much effort into, but it's got a little small product and I'm wanting to, you know, do some testing traffic. And I might do $1,000 in 90 days on something like that. I mean, you know, I've never literally done a full 30 days, $1,000 experiment. And so I really wrestled with this in presenting this. And I'm being really transparent here. And, you know, I, my gut feeling would be if I were working with a client, and that wanted to do this, what I would probably do is have them write an ebook and try to make the ebook worth like $37 price tag. That's probably what I would do, okay? Whatever it took to make it worth that. And maybe it would, it would take doing a couple interviews with some other experts and then transcribing it and putting it into the ebook in addition to your material. I, I don't know, okay? But, you know, something that has maybe 100 pages. And, and really, if you think about it, 100 pages, if you just wrote 10 pages a day, you write an ebook in 10 days, and you'd have 100 articles because you just take a page a piece for your articles, and you'd be making mm -hmm. subscribers, and you'd have a 100-page book. And if it's good content, put a $37 price tag on it, okay? And all you'd have to do is sell 30 of them. And I really believe that if somebody were to work hard, work eight hours a day, write an, a, one ebook, and then write you know, be writing articles and just submitting them like crazy, they could probably come pretty close to selling 30 of those in the first month. And, and then I started thinking about it and I said, well, you know, a lot of people just aren't, even if they're just not going to be willing to write for eight hours a day. And they're just not going to. And so I thought, well, why don't I throw in a part of what I do that will not feel like something a beginner really should be doing, but really – if, if they can write their first ebook in 10 days and they take their first five or six days and write 10 articles a day and have 60 articles and, and get 50 or 60 subscribers in that tell them what they want so they can write their ebook the next 10 days, my feeling is if somebody has already written an ebook and has 160 articles online, so 60 that they wrote before writing the art, before writing the book and then 100 from the book, they have 160 articles, 100 page ebook at day 15, 16, would it really be out of the question for him to do a recording? What, what do you think, Mark? Uh, you know, I'd have to say no. I mean, uh, I, I think they could absolutely pull that off. Okay. And so here's what I thought. Instead of making this, you know, you know, really tough and saying you've got to sell 30 at 37, my thought was, why don't I just give instructions here on how to create a, a, an MP3 program, even in your first 30 days, how to create an MP3 program that you could sell for 97 and you'd literally only need like three or four of those sales to bring, you know, to bring you down to only needing say 600 from your, your 37 book. And then you'd only have to sell 20 eBooks and 10 or, or three or four of your $97 recording. And to me, that would be an easier way to get to a thousand dollars than just trying to do it with an eBook. What do you Absolutely. think? Mark? Absolutely. I yeah. think that's absolutely right. You know, it comes back to working smart and not hard sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And so would you like me to share that with you guys then? I would love to have you okay. share that with us. So here's what we're going to do. We simplified this so much with the ebook, And there's one piece that I left out because we didn't really, really, really need it. Okay? I'm going to throw it back in for the ebook. I like to create an outline for my ebook. Okay, I like to create an outline, and the easiest way to write a 100-page ebook is to just have 10 chapters with 10 topics in each chapter. It's the easiest way. And so what I like to do is I like to go out and ask my subscribers what they, kind of help they need, 
in this particular topic and everything they say they need help with, that's one of my topics. So I need 10 of those. And then what I do is once I have 10 topics, I just ask, well, what are the 10 things that somebody might need to know in order to accomplish whatever that topic is? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. It sure does. That's absolutely right. So basically we have a 100 topic or 100 subtopic outline, and we use that to write our ebook. Okay. Could we also use that 100 topic outline to record a 10 CD program? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. What would it take? 10 CDs would be one CD on each topic, and if you've got a 60-minute CD and you divide that by 10 subtopics, you would only have to talk for six minutes on each subtopic, right? Uh-huh. Okay? So if you've already written 60 articles and you've already written a 100-page ebook, and you've already been writing and communicating with people about your niche, answering questions, doing research online, wouldn't you think a beginner – even if they're a beginner on day one, after 15 days of doing everything I just described, do you think they could probably talk off the cuff for six minutes on each one of those subtopics? Absolutely they could. I mean, and, you know, the best thing about it is is once you take that first step and start recording, it really does flow. I mean, you've you got to get comfortable, I know, initially, but once you start it, it really isn't that hard. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Doing the very first one's the hardest one. It really is. Very first recording. And so here's what I recommend people do. I recommend that once they've created their ebook, they simply create a recording on the same topic. Okay, now it doesn't need, it's not going to be word for word what's in the ebook because you're going to record it fresh. And because you're talking, you're probably going to go deeper. And especially since now you've been talking to your subscribers, you're going to go deeper. Okay. And so what I recommend people do is they get a, an, a, a, they can use any MP3 recording software they want to, okay? So somebody wants to do this on their own the way they want to, they can Google MP3 software. What I personally recommend, though, is that they go to audioacrobat.com, audioacrobat.com, and they subscribe to the service, and you can, you can, uh, you can record an unlimited number of, um, of MP3s. You can record them with a microphone right onto your, your computer, or you can record them on a telephone, and, it, it, you know, Audio Acrobat does all the work for you. Okay, there's tutorials in there. That's what I would recommend rather than software. Now, if somebody already owns software or they already know how to do it on their own, hey, do it the way they already know. But if they're a rank beginner and they don't know where to start, the place to start is audioacrobat.com. That's my recommendation, okay? It's a reasonable price service, and it's, it's so easy to use. It saves the MP3s for you. You don't even have to upload them to your own server to sell them. You can literally, you could literally, when you sold your, your MP3 series, you could literally just send people a link to the link that they give you to the MP3, okay? If you were to make them into CDs and sell them physically, then that's really easy. Just go type in Google online, CD fulfillment, okay, and there's a bunch of companies that will compete for your business, and all you have to do is upload all those MP3s, and they'll do all the work for you, okay? For a small fee, they will design your, your cover. They will put them in a box for you. They will ship them out. They'll do all the work for you. Okay, and I'm not going to tell you how they do it because every company does it different. So you just hire one company and they'll tell you how to do it. They'll say, these are the instructions for uploading your MP3. You know, what do you want to name this thing? We'll do all the work for you. Okay, and they're going to charge you a small fee for it, and that's, that's fair. Okay, and, you know, maybe you sell the, the package for $97 and it costs you 15 for the that fulfillment company to do it. Okay, so now you, you net $82 and then they do all the work for you. So you know, that, right. that's just a beautiful thing. Okay, so, and again, sales letter for this, this second product, use a sales letter creator. Um, let me say this, and that, that pretty much sums up what to do, okay? Let me say this. I know this sounds like a lot of work. I mean, my goodness, we've been talking about this now for an hour and 45 minutes. It sounds yeah. like a lot of work. But really, if somebody breaks this down to the things that have to be done first, and I'll just go quick, quickly through them. Decide a niche, new domain name, post them a C panel, create FTP, use FileZilla, create a squeeze page, use AWeber, and create an easy articles account with a premium membership for the first month. I just counted eight things, and those could all be done in an afternoon, if not an afternoon, a day. Okay, I could do all those in two hours. You could do a rank beginner probably in an afternoon, if not an afternoon, one eight-hour day. Then what they're going to do is they are going to write articles that have a resource box on them. They go to the squeeze page they've already made to 
allow people to download a free giveaway book. Oh, I forgot to mention how to write a free giveaway book. A free giveaway book. Uh, open up a Word document and write six articles on your topic and write a title that appeals to the six topics, or you could do ten topics if you wanted. The topic, the title of your giveaway would be the ten things to do to X, Y, Z, and you'd have ten articles or the six things or the seven things, and then you convert it to a PDF. Many word processors today have a really simple method of just you export it and it becomes a, a PDF. If somebody does not have that, they can go online and find a a PDF converter, or they can use the one I use when I'm not converting it straight from a word, a, a word processing document. They can use uh, createpdf.adobe.com. Okay, so there's obviously lots of other solutions. I'm just sharing the one I use. Okay, so going, going back to the simple system, write the articles, submit them to the directory, write a 100-page ebook. That's a 10-day project with 10 pages a day. Record an MP3 series. That's a 10-day project with just one hour a day. That's a 10-day project. Write a sales page for each, and with the software, that's a few hours a piece. And then send emails out to your list. Basically, you don't need any special language. You've been writing these people. You've been building a relationship. You've probably been really excited. You've been telling them you're writing an ebook. You've been telling them you're recording these MP3s. So you just send a simple email out that says, "Hey." I just finished my sales page for the ebook. I'd love for you to be the first to take a look and, uh, hey, buy a copy if you want. I mean, there doesn't need to be any special language. We're just talking the first 30 days. You send the email out. You've built a relationship. People are not going to buy because of your stellar sales language. They're going to buy because they trust you after having communicated with you over the course of the last 10, 20, 30 days. Wouldn't you agree, Mark? Absolutely agree, and I think that you know the one lesson you're sharing with everybody right now is that you're building the relationship with your customer before you even have their product. You're gonna you're gonna fix the need that they have before you even get to that point. I mean, it's amazing what you're saying because most people do it the exact opposite way. They come up with a product, then they figure out how to sell it to somebody. Your way is almost foolproof, as that you're. You know what the, the need is already, and then you create the product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, Mark, absolutely. And I'll tell you, this system works. It's the same system with, obviously, a tweak here and a tweak there when I'm creating different kinds of products. And, you know, it, 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 in its core, it is the same basic system that I have used for years and that I still use to create new products. It's the exact same system I use with my, my clients time in and time out. It's the exact system that, that we've used. And I mean, I've really, I've boiled this down to 30 days. Um, it, I've made it aggressive, but really when you think about the steps, with the exception of the first eight steps that are all done the first day, there's really only four more steps. The step is write articles. The second step is submit them to easy articles. The third step is five steps. I said four or five steps. The third step is write emails to people to find out, to build relationship, just like you would a real friend, okay? And I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you something crazy here. Even though you've got an autoresponder, if you only have 100 people, you can really respond to everybody personally. Okay, so that's my rabbit hole digression. The, the fourth thing that somebody can do that somebody needs to do is write an ebook. Ten days, ten pages. The fifth thing somebody needs to do is create an MP3 or CD program one hour a day for ten days. If they were really aggressive, they could do two hours a day for five days. If they were really, really aggressive, they could do three and a third hours a day for three days. Okay, I really recommend one or two hours a day. Okay, most people right. can't. Most people, I think, don't have um, the perseverance to do more than that, but that's okay. It still puts us within 30 days, and you're still able to launch it, and you're still able to make sales. And, you know, maybe it's $812, maybe it's $1,219, but I really believe if somebody follows the exact blueprint I just gave, I, I believe they're going to be close to a grand, whether it's a little under, a little over, they're going to be there. And what's more important, Mark, is that whether they do $800, thousand dollars twelve hundred dollars the key is wouldn't you think if somebody did a thousand dollars and had two products and already had 150 200 articles online what could they do their second and third month just by creating more products and driving more traffic oh exactly i mean you could see that's that's the key is that once you learn how to make money you can do it over and over and over again and that's the beauty of this type of, of business 
And that's what everybody really needs to keep in mind. It does take some work. You do have to work at it. But you're creating income for the rest of your life, not just tonight, not just tomorrow, not in 30 days. But you can do this anytime from anywhere, and that's incredible freedom. Uh-huh. Yep, you're absolutely right. All right, well, any questions for me on anything that I've covered? If if somehow maybe I've, I've – I don't think I've left anything out, but if for some reason there's something I've left out, any questions for me at all, Mark? You know, uh, you have given us just a ton of information here, and I I really do want to thank you. Um, What you've given us today is absolutely fantastic. I mean, this is is a doable plan. In in just a few days you can get things started, and, uh, I mean, incredible information. And these are step-by-step directions on how to start your own business. I mean, nobody... Nobody has this out there right now. So um, I really, really want to thank you, Sean, for for, uh, sharing this with us and just, again, tell you how much I really do appreciate it. Well, you're welcome, and I appreciate uh, you asking me to do this and asking such great questions today and, uh, you know, for us, you know, really being able to dig into this. This has been uh, fun and, and exciting. Well, again, I, I want to tell you, you know, I appreciate it, and I know everybody out there, I'm hoping you – took notes down, and you, you, you've you got this in front of you now. So just take action. Start doing what we talked about right away. Don't wait. Don't think about it. Just start doing it, and you'll see. It'll start to flow. You'll come up with new ideas, things. You know, it just takes a little time, but once you start, it really is amazing what you can accomplish. So on that note, uh, again, Sean, I know we've taken more of your time than we had originally planned, and I'm going to let you go, but uh, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, well, you're welcome. 